Typically, if you wanted to change the color of something in Photoshop, you would need to select it, add an adjustment layer, refine your layer mask, and then make your adjustment. Now that's easy enough if you have some experience in the program, but if you're just getting started or are short on time, it's enough to make you want to skip doing those adjustments altogether. So I want to show you a time-saving trick using AI masking features in Photoshop to make selective adjustments a lot more approachable. Now these AI masking features aren't actually in the main Photoshop workspace, but instead they're in Camera Raw. And you can save them as presets, so once you make these adjustments once, they can be used for all of your other photos to save you a bunch of time. Now in this particular example, we'll work on this JPEG photo inside of Camera Raw to demonstrate these adjustments. However, if you are opening a raw file into Photoshop, Camera Raw will open automatically for you so you can skip the step I'm about to show you now. If you're like me and you're starting inside of the main Photoshop workspace to access Camera Raw, we'll want to go up here to Filter and down here to Camera Raw Filter. This opens up Camera Raw, and the first thing that we're gonna do is access our masking tool by clicking the masking icon. Since we have a person in this photo, this is where the AI masking features come into play. Camera Raw will automatically recognize any people that are here, and I'll click on the person that I want to edit. If you already use Lightroom, some of this is gonna look very similar. Now let's say I want to go ahead and edit her clothes, add some skin retouching adjustments, as well as enhance her eyes. To do this, we of course need to make multiple different masks, but I'm going to begin by creating a clothes adjustment, so enabling the clothes mask, as well as a iris and pupil mask. Since I want to adjust these separately, I'll enable the create two separate masks setting and click create. Now in the masking panel, you'll see we have a close mask as well as a pupil mask. But let's start with the clothes, for example, and change the color of them. I'll disable the show overlay so I can just see my image. And now I'll go down to the hue setting. Adjusting this, it's kind of like the hue saturation adjustment in the main Photoshop workspace, but a little bit more simple. We can just go and refine the hue of the selected area to change the color of her sweater super easily. Now there are some areas here that are missing this color adjustment, but we can easily fix this by adding a brush adjustment by clicking add brush and then zooming into the photo we can simply go and paint over the areas we want to add that color back into. Now, when you're working on individual photos, this is fine to do. However, when you want to go and create a preset for these AI masking adjustments, that's when you will not want to do these additional touch-ups, as you'll see why in just a moment. For now, I'll just do this quick little touch-up, and then we'll move on to the eyes. Looking at this before and after, we have quickly changed the color of our subject shirt without having to do any selections. So let's go and click on the iris and pupil mask now. I'll disable the show overlay setting, and I'm just going to increase the whites, bring down the blacks a little bit, and add a touch of contrast. This is an easy way to make your subject's eyes pop, especially any natural highlights that are in their eyes. Now before we go and save our presets for these different masks, we're going to create a retouching mask that we'll be able to reuse in future photos. To do this, we need to create a new mask, this time clicking the Create New Mask button since we've already created some masks previously. I'll go down here to select people. Now I want to go and select all of our subject skin, which will be the body skin and the facial skin. Now I want to edit both of these things together, so I'm going to disable the separate masks option. So this will put both of these adjustments on one single adjustment mask. I'll now click create, and now we have that skin mask here. To add a quick softening adjustment, we can scroll down to the clarity setting and I'll just reduce the clarity of our subject's skin just a little bit and then increase the texture a touch so that it doesn't look too washed out. Turning that on and off, you can see how it just lightens up our subject skin super easily. So at this point, we have created three different AI masks using Camera Raw, but now we can save these masks as a preset so we can just repeat this process on any other photo without having to manually create any of these masks in the future. So to do this, we'll click on the three dots icon and go down to create preset. Now we want to go and only select the masks that we want to reuse in the future, such as the clothing selection, skin selection, or the eyes selection. Because of that, I'll click on check none to disable all of my selected adjustments, 
And then I'll open up the masking and I'll click on the one mask that I want to save for this example. In this case, I'll choose the mask one, which is the skin mask, and I'll rename this to skin softening. Making sure that only that one adjustment is selected, I'll click OK. Now you would go and repeat this process for all of your other masks individually. However, I'm just going to create one more preset by clicking on the three dots, going to create preset, and only enabling the clothing mask because that is the one that we added some additional adjustments to, which can cause some problems as I'll explain in a moment. I'll rename this to clothing mask and click OK. Now let's say I've cleared all of these masks. I'll click delete all masks and now we are back to our original photo before we did any masking adjustments in camera raw. To add these new AI presets, we can just click on our preset setting and then within my user presets, I have my clothing mask, which is the one I just created as well as the skin softening. I'll go ahead and add the clothing mask for now and then I'll add the skin softening. Going back to the masking panel, you'll now see that we have both of these masks created. And if I click on them, we can see all of the adjustments related to that specific mask. Now, this also will include any adjustments that you created before you saved your preset, such as with the close adjustment here, you can see that I added an additional brush adjustment to this area of the photo. Now, this works fine in this particular photo. However, when you go and reuse this preset in another image, this brush adjustment is going to be in a completely wrong area. So that's why you don't want to make any additional adjustments to your AI mask. So that way it's the most versatile across all of your images. But anyways, now with those masks, complete, we can click OK. The camera raw adjustments will now be applied onto our image. And because I have a smart object as my image layer, which you can enable by just right clicking and going to convert to smart object, that is why I have smart filters so I can see the camera raw filter here. I can always double click on the words camera raw filter to reaccess that later on. Now to prove the point that these adjustments can be used in future images, let's go into a second example. But before we get there, if you want help remembering all of the steps that we talk about here, I created a free lesson cheat sheet for this tutorial that you can access down in the description below. It's totally free. And again, the link is below. Anyways, moving into example number two here, I'll click on my image layer and then go up to filter camera raw filter. Now in our previous example, we created an eye enhancement adjustment that I just went and saved as a preset off screen. But now we can access this once again using the same methods as before. Clicking on the presets option, going to user presets, and then now we have the eye enhancer, which is the one I just created. So clicking on that will apply that mask and going to the masking panel, you can see that I have automatically created that adjustment right here on this new photo using the same settings from our previous example. And if we want to edit or refine any of these adjustments, we can just click on that mask and then go and refine our saved settings as needed. Once you're happy with the adjustment, just click OK and then those settings will be applied to your photo without having to do any selections. You don't have to deal with any layer masks and you don't have to decide which adjustment layers you need to use. Using these AI masking features, life gets a lot easier with selective adjustments.